Welcome back to Sprague River Homestead. I'm Nikki, and today, once again, we're talking about how to become a good rabbit breeder. So step four can kind of be done at the same time that we're ordering our standard and getting ready for that, and that is going to come down to researching feed. So in every area, there's usually a couple of different kinds of feed you can get. Um... You know, some areas obviously have more than others. I think in our area now, we have access to four or five different feeds. Um, but this is a good time to be figuring out exactly what the nutritional requirements for your rabbits are, what kind of feed your local feed stores are carrying, and how often that feed is getting changed out. I know in some of the bigger box stores, your tractor supplies, uh, your Wilco's and that kind of stuff, a lot of times the feed sits there for a really long time. So you might not want to go with a bigger box store. Feed stores, smaller feed stores usually have fresher feed. Uh, but you want to find out, is it milled locally? Uh, what is the first ingredient? Uh, most of your rabbit feed should be either like an alfalfa or timothy for the first ingredient. Uh, but look into your quality. Do some Googling. Find out, has there been recalls? It seems like most of the major feed companies go through a recall about every, at least every year. That includes Purina, Neutrina, Manapro, all of that. So look into it. See if you've had any recalls lately. Uh, but beyond that, you're also looking at what percentage. Because most rabbit feeds are going to be a 15, a 16, a 17, or an 18% protein. Now, if you're doing a rabbit that's 10 to 12 pounds, like the Americans, Silver Fox, some of that kind of stuff, uh, you might benefit from an 18% protein. Whereas if you're doing a Harlequin or some of the smaller type breeds, uh, you might only want 15, 16%, somewhere in there. New Zealand's and Californians are ridiculously prone to getting fat on an 18% feed. So that's another breed that typically will do better on a 16. And you're going to find that out as you're doing your research on your breed. Um, and in one of these next steps, when we're actually talking to some breeders, you're going to get a better feel for what they need. But in the meantime, while we're waiting to get to those next steps, make sure that you're just researching what's available, what the price point is, uh, what the ingredients are, and how fresh that feed's going to be, because these are all really important things to know. Fiber is also a really big thing. So if you're getting a feed that's low in fiber, uh, you may have to go up in protein, kick in some hay, and bring all that back down to where the level you actually want it to be. So that's it for this week. We will be back next week with the fifth step. In the meantime, happy homesteading. <music>